What's up Team Walk House? It is time for another resort review. This is the video series where we go to a brand new ski resort, we absolutely rip it, we explore, we see what this resort has to offer, we come back here and we give it a score from zero to 100. And the way we're gonna get that score is by you guys smashing the subscribe button. I'm joking. We're gonna go through 10 categories, each category getting a score from zero to 10. Zero is not applicable, meaning they don't have it at all. One is terrible, five is average, and 10 is best in the world. So we'll tell you up those scores, we'll get a score from zero to 100, and then I'm gonna tell you who this resort is for. So if a resort gets a bad score, it doesn't mean it's a bad resort. It might just mean that this resort is for someone specifically and not for everyone. So those are the rules that we play by and let's jump into this resort review. And today on the chopping block is a resort that I'm so excited to cover. This resort is so insane. Beartooth Basin in Montana slash Wyoming. It's like literally on the border of those two states. I always say it's in Montana, but then everyone in Wyoming yells at me. So you guys, battled out in the comments. And if you're a local, please share all the information. If I miss something or, you know, best place to stay, best place to eat, all that type of stuff, locals share all that down below. So Beartooth Basin is a resort that's at 10,900 vertical feet. It has a vertical drop of a thousand feet and it has 600 skiable acres if you're willing to hike your way to a lot of the stuff. You know what I'm saying? The lifts do not get you to all 600 acres. With all that being said, how expensive is it to ride their lifts? How expensive is it to ride this resort? And at $50, you get access for the day, which I thought was pretty fair for what you get. This is an awesome resort. So for 50 bucks, I gave him a five on the, the score. It's average. That's fair. I think it's fair. Now lodging, ski in, ski out. Where am I gonna stay? You ain't gonna be staying on the pass. Uh, the Veritude Basin is located on a pass and it is a summer only ski resort. So they don't have lodging or anything like that. So you can stay in Red Lodge. We stayed at this awesome campground at the bottom, but as for staying in the resort or on the resort, it's not there. So it's zero, not applicable. They don't have it. Now ease of access. How easy is it to get to this ski resort? It's not easy at all. I don't even know where to look where you would even fly in. There's like not even a big city near this place. I ended up just driving up, but even when we drove up from the bottom of Colorado, we had to like go around the whole mountain because we could either go the Wyoming side of the pass or the Montana side of the pass. And like, it's a lot, it's near Yellowstone. Um, so I, I don't know where you fly in when you fly into Yellowstone, but I would maybe consider flying where you would go for Yellowstone and then driving to Beartooth Basin. And I do know people drive up from the Wyoming side or the Red Lodge side, but I do know the Red Lodge side slash the Montana side is like this super gnarly, beautiful, windy road uh, that it's it's a work on the ease of access. This is not an easy ski resort to get to. Once again, it's only open in the summer because the pass gets covered in snow and you can't even like get there. So once the snow melts down enough that they could plow the snow off, then you can go ride the ski resort. It's a one, this is gnarly. And now I know what you're thinking. Why are you going to these gnarly hole in the wall ski resorts, Jonathan? And it's because we have the goal to ride every resort in the United States. And the way you guys can track that is by going to resort ski maps.com is a map of every resort in the United States. All the green ones are the ones that we have been to. You can click on them and watch the video there. If you click on a red one and nothing pops up, it's because we haven't been there yet. So if you go to the top right hand corner, you can see our schedule for the upcoming season. See if we're going to be at your resort. You can take time off, come ride with us. We love ripping with you guys because when we ride with you guys, you get to share us all the gems, all the cool spots of the ski resorts. And so that's why we love riding with you guys, but check out resort ski maps. You can literally organize it by Epic Resorts. You can check out all the resort view scores. You can check all the stats from the channel. Like there's so much on resortskimaps.com. You can waste hours there. So go check out resortskimaps.com. And now let's jump into chairlifts. Now they don't have a chairlift. They have two platters, which is amazing. They even have that. And the top platter is at a 55 degree pitch, which I'm pretty sure is the steepest pitch for a platter period. So you're getting up the mountain with platters, which is sick. It's only one person at a time. And for me as a snowboarder, it destroys destroys your lead thigh so much. I remember leaving with the biggest bruise on my thigh. That being said, it's hard to not give them a good score for the fact that there are two platters in the middle of a bowl, in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of Montana. It is nuts. So I gave them a three when it came to lifts, even though they don't have a chairlift, they don't have a gondola, they don't have a chalet, anything like that. But the two platters that they do have is insane. The fact that it's even there and you can ride it, it's awesome. If you're a snowboarder, you're probably gonna get a bruised thigh. Just know that. Now runs, why are we here if we're not gonna be ripping? and this is some of the gnarliest train you're gonna get, but it's not some of the friendliest train you're gonna get. They do groom a little bit, which is actually kind of crazy at the bottom. The way it's lined out is they say they have nine like designated trails and they groom the very bottom, which is the blue side. But if you cannot ride into the bowl, you can't get to the blue, which is kind of like, you know what I'm saying? You, I guess you could walk into it like around the side or something, but like you have to be an expert rider to get here. And then it's, it's just a bowl. So due to the limiting factor, despite it being some of the funnest, gnarliest, like awesome terrain for extreme riding, there's not any greens, you know, there's, it's limited there's like to the runs, you know, nothing's long, it's all very short. So when it came to runs, I gave him a four on the runs. Now 
out to a rain park. When I went, it was a really low snow year and they usually build a pretty big kicker. And that's like the park they have, is this one massive kicker. So I didn't get to hit it, but they did build other kickers around the mountain. Like this is one of the resorts I feel like you could build a jump anywhere you want and they're not gonna say anything to you. And so uh, there are park jumps or jumps places and they do build a specific park jump. So when it came to park, I gave them a two because the whole mountain is also a park. Like go check out their website. People are literally sending it off the biggest cornice drops and like it, this place is nuts, and, and, which is really cool. But uh, their park is, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I do wish I got to ride it. Now, if you like the mission of riding every resort in the United States or if you just want to rep Team Huck House, consider snagging Evolution merch. You can throw the sticker on the side of your helmet. Let everyone know if you're a part of Team Huck House. We also have a ski version of the Evolution stickers. This is how we afford to travel to all these resorts. As you guys grab in the hats, the shirts, mainly the stickers, any of our merch guys, it's all linked down below. If you do snag it, tag me on my Instagram. I'll give you guys gear and sticker shout outs in the vlogs. But guys, thank you so much for snagging the merch. Supporting the dream of riding every resort in the United States. There's over 470 ski resorts. So we're on a mission. Food. We're gonna get hungry. You're gonna want to eat on the mountain. So pack a lunch because they don't offer any food So zero on the food and there's nothing nearby So pack a lunch if you're that person that has to eat in the middle of the day views and scenery How sick is it to be at Bear Tooth Basin? Super sick. Not only is it drive up absolutely gorgeous when you're there one is once again it's in the middle of nowhere you feel so like special but you're in the middle of this bowl and there's mountains everywhere and there's a lake down below and it's so cool but the bowl itself is just gorgeous and like the views you got other big montana mountains out there like i was shocked that montana even had mountains that big so i gave him an eight on the uh views and scenery I, the vibe there from the views and scenery alone it's just it's so cool and so special and like it's dope now employees some people say we should cover snow conditions but this is a summer only ski resort how do you think the snow is gonna be? It's either gonna be very firm and hard in the morning or it's gonna be super slushy, you know what I'm saying? So we don't cover snow conditions because it can vary when we go to places like that. But we do cover employees because we have had an employee absolutely ruin our day on the mountain. You can check out the Keystone Incident video right there. But at the same time, you can have an employee absolutely make your day. So that's why I like to cover employees because, you know, for the most part, that's gonna be the vibe and energy of the ski resort. So that's why we cover employees. And so Beartooth Basin's employees got a seven. The reason why is you gotta be the gnarliest person ever to be out there running this resort. These dudes put in so much work and effort. Everyone was good spirits and happy and like they gave me tips for the platter because I actually really didn't really ride platters too much before I showed up there. And then once again, it's a platter at 55 degree pitch. So like I haven't really rode them. And then it's like the gnarliest of the gnarly. I was like trying to hold on to my arms. The dude's like, yo, 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 no, try this. Save the day, you know what I'm saying? Like things like that was huge for me. It made my time at Beartooth Basin exponentially better. So the employees got a seven, those dudes rock. Like once again, you gotta be the gnarliest person even work at that ski resort. They literally carry the gas to the snowcat down by hand. That's how gnarly this place is. Now the last category, the would I go back factor, because if I wouldn't go back, why would I recommend it to you guys? And I would go back completely. 10 out of 10, like this place is so special, so unique, summer only ski resort. It was literally the coolest thing and the coolest experience. And now that I'm already better at Big Mountain, I definitely want to get back out there. I remember when I went, I was like, this is like literally at the borderline of like too much for me. Like I just wasn't fully there. For the gnarliness mixed in with it, it was kind of cold, so the snow never really got soft. And like obviously riding gnarly terrain on ice is like a little scary. Catchy. So I, I'm excited to get back out there. We'll do it one day when we're heading out to Hood. That's what I did the first time. It's fun. It's unique. It's different. It's not open long. It's only open a couple, maybe a month out of the season, maybe two months, which is nuts. And so once again, it's only open in the summer. Now, before I tell you the score out of 100, if you enjoyed this video so far, check out other ones. We've covered so many resort reviews and you can check out the playlist right there. So Beartooth Basin out of 100 got up. Smash like. 40, which is awesome for what this resort is of 40 come on that's insane and that's why i say do not judge the resort fully on the score but judge the resort by who is it is really for and this resort is for the gnarliest of the gnarly i was the only snowboarder there and literally when i rolled in people gave me like the like the dirtiest looks because they're so used to other snowboarders getting like completely bodied by the platters or going down not being able to get up and having to walk out like you need to be a solid snowboarder if you're going to go there if you're a skier you probably can get in with the intermediate level but like for snowboarders like make sure you are confident on your board and you're used to riding bowls, really steep, kind of icy terrain, and you know how to ride a platter. Like this place is no joke. It's for the extreme of the extreme. So with that being said, Team Milkhouse, thank you so much for shredding with me today. And as always, thanks for watching. Keep evolving. We'll see you tomorrow with another video because it is daily on this snowboard channel.